so today I'm going to do a demonstration of pancakes. It's going to be a two-day recipe. When you're in class, I've already washed my hands, I have my hair up, I have my apron on, and if it looks like I'm a little hunched over, I am because um, I don't have somebody holding on to the camera and trying to make sure you're going to be able to see everything that I'm actually doing. So I have out all my equipment. I also have out all my ingredients, I hope and I'm gonna show you how to measure everything out. So doing a video demo is a little bit easier for me because that means I don't have to do it anywhere from two to three times throughout the day. It's something that you can utilize at home also. You can watch me on YouTube under the name Naomi Sour. Right, so anytime you wanna cook at home, I have a few videos going now and I am making them as we go throughout the semester. So the first ingredient that I need is one egg. So of course I have my custard bowl. And I'm going to crack my egg inside of the custard bowl. And the reason why you're cracking it into the custard bowl is in case you have a bad egg, you want to make sure you don't get in any shells. And also, I got a little bit of the egg on my hand. And for sanitation reasons, I'm just going to rinse them off quickly. So it calls for one egg beaten. So the way that you beat an egg is I have a fork in back of me. And you're just going to take the egg and you're going to carefully beat it with the fork that you should already have out. And I'm actually going to keep the egg, the uh, fork in the bowl because as it settles, sits here while measuring the other ingredients, I may need to take the fork to it again. It then calls for one cup of flour. So there's a few things that I actually need here. I need wax paper, so I'm going to actually cut up couple of pieces of wax paper because you know our dry ingredients are always going to be placed on wax paper and then our wet ingredients are either going to be placed into a custard bowl or in a liquid measuring cup depending on what it is that you're measuring because you can't put a liquid on a piece of wax paper. So you need wax paper, I need my one cup measuring cup, and two levelers in your lab, a small one and a big one. You're always going to need a spoon, which I don't see, and of course, my flour. So with flour, you're always going to lightly spoon and level off. So what I'm going to do is, because the container is big enough, I'm going to take my spoon. I'm just going to lightly spoon right over the container. You don't want to do it here, because then you're going to make a mess on the table. You can actually do it over a piece of wax paper, that's fine, but I'm going to try to save our money and not place it on the wax paper. So I'm gonna do it over the container because I have the room. You're gonna heap it over and then you're going to level it off. Okay? And you're gonna place that one cup of flour on the wax paper. Now make sure you have a big enough piece of wax paper to hold the ingredients that you're measuring to. Then calls for one tablespoon of sugar. You don't need a lot of sugar in a recipe for pancakes. Now these pancakes are from scratch okay we don't cook out of a box here in school so i teach you to do everything um, from scratch okay and a lot of these ingredients or most of these ingredients today you're going to have at home so why open a box of aunt jemima or bisquick when you have these simple ingredients at home and you can make it um, on your own and you can show your family too what you're learning in the classroom so one tablespoon of sugar is the big one here so there's two different sets of measuring spoons in your lab, just make sure you're using the one tablespoon. You don't need a lot of sugar because think of everything that you're putting on the top of the pancake when it's done, like that syrup that's really not good for us, especially after teaching you about nutrition. But a little bit of syrup, again, can go a long way. And you also pour vegetable oil. So again, that's what you're going to need. Another custard bowl out, which I thought I took out and I don't. So that's why you want to make sure you have everything out. You want to have everything out so it's easy and it's accessible uh, to you. So the vegetable oil, again, I'm going to use the one tablespoon. And this is what students, you don't want to take and go like this. Look where your custard bowl is. So I'm going to hover down and this can come out very quickly too. So I'm going to go very slowly. I'm going to get it to the top then I'm gonna pour it into the custard bowl, okay? I'm actually going to take a paper towel to that also because I believe I'm going to be using 
the same measuring spoon, or I could use another set of measuring spoons, or in class, somebody else may already have another set of measuring uh, spoons out. Because if I put the baking powder in here next, it's just all going to stick. So I just took a paper towel and I wiped it out. So here's my baking powder. Remember, baking powder is called a leavening agent. A leavening agent is what's going to make these pancakes rise. Okay, baking powder and baking soda are totally different. Baking powder can usually work alone in a quick bread, okay? You very rarely are going to see baking soda in a quick bread. Baking soda usually needs baking powder. However, in a cookie, it's a little different. Okay, so again, I keep telling you baking is a science. You need to put the ingredients together a certain way and measure properly for proper end results. So here is my baking powder. I'm gonna heap it over. Now it's a little bit harder for me to heap this over and level off over this small container. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, I have two pieces of wax paper. I'm gonna have my leveler here. I'm gonna level off on this piece of wax paper and then I have another piece of wax paper right over there. So what I see students do is that they're here, they're leveling off, but they don't have another piece of wax paper ready. This pile, was the extra, so I'm gonna put the extra definitely back into the container, okay? Perfect. And then my next ingredient is going to be salt. So a very small amount of salt. Grab a piece of wax paper here, and it's a small amount of salt, so a half teaspoon. Again, make sure it looks like I didn't get all the baking powder, so I'm gonna tap that in. A half teaspoon of salt, again, your measurements are on the spoons half teaspoon. So grab a little bit piece here. So I'm just going to try to slowly add the salt. Again, I've leveled off and then I have another piece to put it back on. With the salt, it's not a lot. You can throw it in the garbage. Salt is pretty cheap or you can just kind of pop it back in. All right? But if it's a large amount of salt, definitely try to get it back in or just let me know. The last ingredient is our milk. So we just talked about nutrition and I told you whole milk we should not really be using. Okay, whole milk is for children uh, two and under. So what I chose to do is I bought the reduced uh, fat 2% milk for us, right? You're going to need a liquid measuring cup. Remember, you're always going to get an eye level, but not a flat surface, okay? So this is a flat surface. This is definitely not eye level though. So I'm gonna bend down, this is pretty heavy. You're gonna use your muscles. If I can bend down, you can bend down. My knees may crack, yours may not. Okay, so you're gonna go very slowly. And if you add too much, you're just gonna take it out and pour it back in. So eye level, flat surface, I'm right on the line for one cup. And all your ingredients are measured. So at this point in class, you're gonna call me over. I'm gonna check, gonna say, okay, one egg, you got your flour, you got your sugar, your oil, your baking powder your salt, and then your milk. And I'm gonna tell you to move on to the next direction. Now you are gonna be doing this two days um, in school. There's not enough time to do everything in one day. So I'm gonna do exactly what you're gonna be doing in class, and then I'm gonna take another video clip and show you how to bake them day two. So my first direction says, in a small bowl, sift together the flour, the sugar, the baking powder, and the salt. So I'm gonna grab my small bowl, I'm going to grab my sifter and it tells me to sift together the flour. So I'm going to carefully place the flour through the sugar and I have everything basically in the order that I measured it in, the baking powder and the salt. Okay, so what a sifter does, it usually incorporates air into the product, it makes your end result a little bit fluffier. We're actually also uh, combining the ingredients together. So this sifter, I sometimes have a problem with, and it looks like I took the one that's broken. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually switch gears, and I'm gonna grab one that works, because of course I have the one that doesn't. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna hope this one works. So I don't really like these plastic ones because they break easily. So before you do go into the lab, I'm gonna change them out for metal ones. I believe I also have some new ones ordered 
just haven't received them yet. So what I wanted to do is to pull, okay, and it's going to become fluffier too. And I'm just going to tap it. It would get any uh, loose particles or any kind of clumps off if you want to make sure. It all goes into your small bowl. So that was direction number one. Okay, and it's actually fluffier. I don't know if you can see it, but it definitely got fluffier from what it looked like uh, a moment ago. And then now it says to carefully pour this into a plastic bag. Okay, so what I'm having you do is I'm having you use a bag that's big enough where you're actually just going to take this mixture. I've got my whole bowl in there, and I'm just going to dump it. And you're done. So all you're going to do is just take and twist this up, and those are your dry ingredients. Okay. I'm going to move on to the next direction that tells me now, in a medium-sized bowl, to whisk my milk, all my liquid ingredients, my vegetable oil, make sure you get it all in there, and my egg, like I said, I'm just going to take a fork to it again. Now yours is going to settle because yours is going to sit in the refrigerator also for one night. On day two, you're going to have to remix anyway. I'm going to pop this over my sink, and I believe it says to whisk. So in a medium bowl, whisk the milk, vegetable oil, and egg until combined. So it's kind of going to look like eggnog, okay, or scrambled eggs at this point. Just taking your whisk, and that's it. And this says to pour into a medium sized bowl. So I'm going to take my bowl here. You're again, very carefully going to pop this in. You're going to cover it. Okay, so what's going to happen is this you're going to give to me, okay, and this you're going to place in your lab bin for day two, okay, and in a moment I'm going to clean, okay, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you the day two portion of pancakes. climbing up on the table, trying to turn it off. Okay, so here I am, I'm back again. So I am now on day two of your pancakes. Just wanna wipe up some crumbs that I have. I just put my griddle on. I'm gonna grab my recipe, make sure I have it on the right temperature. 375 degrees, so this is a griddle. If you didn't have something like this at home, you could just use a skillet on your stove top. But this is great because you could do anywhere from six to eight pancakes at a time. We're not going to be making huge pancakes. We're going to be making small uh, silver dollar pancakes. Okay? I'm actually going to I'm going to take my temperature down for a moment because I'm going to talk for a minute and then I'm going to put it um, back up too. So again, you have to be very careful with this. It's hot. Day two says for me now to take my container. I didn't just wash my bowl because. Why wash it if I'm just placing the same thing in there? Yours will be clean because you're coming in on day two. So it says to pour the batter from my container into a medium-sized bowl. Yours is going to settle. I just made mine, all right? And you're going to have to stir it, okay? It says to whisk uh, this together to combine. Mine is already combined. It then says to carefully open up your bag. You can just try to make one little hole in it. You're going to make sure that all of this, though, gets into your bowl here. So I'm going to carefully pour this in. You may need help from somebody to make sure you get all of this. We really don't have time to do this uh, in one period for then to, for you to actually sit, eat, and enjoy your pancakes. Okay, but get all of that inside. And we're good. It says to slowly whisk together all your ingredients to combine. I can feel the heat from my griddle. We're going to be doing a little reading uh, from a pancake fact sheet. Now I know that it's getting all stuck in here. With pancake batter, pancake batter, you may see it smoking also, should have some lumps. But you don't want huge lumps. Again, I don't know if you can see. I also want to be careful. You want to mix it. Waffle batter is what should be smooth. So I'm going to mix it. I still see large lumps. Still want some lumps. Now I'm seeing small lumps. Okay, so you don't want to go nuts. Okay, you do want some lumps. That's what people always tend to do is they say, oh, no, no, no. It should be smooth. You can actually see, I see that baking powder reacting. It's all bubbling right now. So 
I'm going to do the test for water. I'm going to take a little bit of water. You're going to have some custard bowls around. I'm hoping mine's not too hot. I'm going to take, and what you should see, you see how that water is dancing all around. If it automatically just goes away, that means that my griddle is too hot, okay? If it just sits there, all right, and doesn't dance at all, that means that it's not hot enough. So I'm good. I'm gonna actually bump it up a little bit more. I'm gonna take, so the griddles, every griddle is a little different here. Um, so you're gonna kind of play around with the temperature. What you don't want are burnt pancakes, all right? So what I also ask you to do on day two is to have our, to make mini pancakes. You should also not need any kind of cooking spray of any kind. You're gonna take a quarter cup measuring cup and you're gonna fill it about halfway and then you're gonna make small pancakes. And you see how I'm scraping the side of the bowl so it doesn't get all over the place. And they should all be about the same size. Okay, so you maybe even be able to see some small little lumps. So I'm going to try to get eight on here. You may want to only go six because, again, I've flipped pancakes before. And maybe your first time, so some people have difficulty. You can see how the pancakes are bubbling. The bubbles should pop and around the edges the pancake should get hard. There's also a test. You definitely want to wait until the bubbles pop. Okay, you can also lift it up a little on the edge to make sure. But the first one that most likely is going to be done is the first one that I put on, which I believe is this one. Because when I'm talking sometimes, I forget about uh, what I'm doing. So we're all bubbling here. We haven't even bubbled over here yet. I have all different sizes of spatulas also, so I think I'm going to go with the smaller version. Sometimes the batter actually uh, sticks to this, so we'll see if this is the one you're going to be using in class. Sometimes I like the uh, metal spatulas. You will all have uh, a dish or a plate to pop it on. I'm going to look because my bubbles have popped, and I'm going to see, ooh, nice golden brown. So again, that's the color that you want. I'm going to flip here. I believe that's the next one I put on. So see how I'm lifting up? I don't want to hit that other pancake. I'm going to go again, I'm going to go again, 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 very carefully lift it and flip it. Okay, so nice golden color here. These look more of a better color here, maybe a little bit uh, too brown here, but I'm sure they're going to taste good. You can see that they're actually rising also. A lot of people at this point, they take their spatula and they press down on their pancake. That's the last thing you want to do. You're defeating the purpose of the baking powder. So the baking powder is making them rise, okay? So why would you take a spatula? You also have to remember that the second side of a pancake never takes as long as the first side. So again, how do you know you're not seeing bubbles, okay? What you can do is just lift it up, be careful, and see, look at that nice color, okay? So I'm going to actually flip it on the battered side, and these are all going to be cooked. Now, nobody in class is going to sit and eat these yet. So you're going to sit as a nice, happy family with your group. And if somebody has difficulty flipping the pancakes or anything like that, you got to remember, it's the first time that you're making pancakes. Well, what are you going to do with this, too? You're going to keep going and making pancakes, okay? So that's what another So Well, what do we do with the rest of the batter? Well, that's why you're using a griddle, okay, so you can get six to eight pancakes on at a time. And your counter's gonna get dirty, that's fine. I'm gonna do what I'm telling you that you should be doing. Again, uh, I've gotten up to possibly like 20 pancakes with this. So if you have three people in your group, four people in a group, some classes uh, in the sixth grade, I'm not sure if there's five in a group, but I know there's definitely three or four in a group. So again, I'm gonna get eight pancakes on here again. So that makes a total, I did it twice, 16. So again, you see it's bubbling, starting over here. We haven't formed any bubbles yet. And again, people see the bubbles and then they lift it and there would be a little bit of a mess going on because they're not quite cooked. Bubbles, and then those bubbles are going to pop. Okay? Perfect. So the only drawback for me doing a video demo is the fact that you don't get to taste the pancakes, but it really does my, make my life a little bit easier where I would do this three times uh, throughout the day. So it's helping me, it's benefiting me, and again, this is something that you can watch at home and say, oh yeah, I forgot how Mrs. Sour made that. What did she say? How did she flip them? What was that piece of equipment that she used? A griddle. So I've, I've popped 
and we're going to check again. Hopefully my talking, beautiful. Okay, so again, flip. See how I'm lifting it up and I'm putting it right in that same spot. What students usually do is they hit that. So again, lift it up and be careful. Okay, if somebody makes a mistake, it's okay. All right, you're just learning. So you're going to be learning all different things in the sixth grade. And then when you get to the seventh grade, you're going to be, make more... Um, trying to think of the word. You're going to make, hmm, what is the word that I'm thinking about? I may have to edit this right now. Advance. There we go, Mrs. Sauer. A more advanced uh, recipe. So we don't make pancakes. We actually make crepes. So my face is probably really red right now, but I'm going to go with it because I'm always making mistakes, as you know. So again, nice golden color. I'm sure my family is going to make fun of me here because they like watching my YouTube clips and uh, making fun of me. Uh, and maybe I could teach them a few lessons, my sister and my mother. They joke around. Okay, so look, I'm good. Perfect. Yes, I know these are hot, but I just kind of want to show you. All right? I'm going to flip these all. So I got 16. Let's see if I could get, I'll probably get maybe two more, maybe one more. And who's going to eat these? Whoops, kind of hurt that one. Now you can add chocolate chips to something like this. You can add blueberries. You can mash some bananas, so I'm going to try to get two. So if you were to use chocolate chips, what I would suggest you do is that you would take the chips. I don't have any around right now. You would just take and sprinkle the chips right into the pancake uh, up here. If you put it into the batter here, all those chocolate chips and the weight of them are going to drop all to the bottom. Blueberries, I would do the same thing. Okay, you could sprinkle little blueberries, or what you can do with blueberries is if you put a little bit of flour on them, and then you put them in the into the batter, they won't sink to the bottom. So just like I taught you with the nutritious uh, blueberry muffin. Okay, mashed banana. I prefer a mashed banana, mashing a banana up, a nice ripe banana, and putting it uh, into the mixture too. Okay, so we're gonna check these. We've got our bubbles. They are popping. And again, we can lift up. We can check, and again, I have that nice golden color. Now I have all this room here too, all right? And we're going to give that other side. And something fell off of my wrist here. And at this point, other students uh, who are not preparing the pancakes, you'll be setting up your lab table. You're getting plates, uh, forks, knives, uh, water to drink, and you'll be able to sit and hopefully enjoy the pancakes before you head off to your next class, all right? Now I'm gonna see if we're good here, and we're not quite done. I'm gonna check my temperature. So I use 350 degrees for most of the time, and actually the recipe calls for 375. So like I said, some of the griddles uh, work better than others. And you see how it's actually taking longer for these two? I'm just gonna kind of move them around. Okay, so the bell is going to ring for the next class, so I'm going to let these cook, I don't know, about 30 more seconds, and I'm going to say good luck making pancakes at home. Hopefully, uh, you can make them for the, your family, and they'll get to enjoy things that you're doing in class and learning uh, in class. Remember, you will get copies of all of these recipes at the end of the semester, and you can always uh, look me up on YouTube at Naomi Sauer. I hope you enjoy. Thanks a lot.